Okay. David Titcher. David Hosselton. And David Shore, and we're all executive producers uh, on Houdini and Doyle. Congratulations on the new series. Thanks. I wanted to talk to you guys about what was the inspiration for the series? The inspiration was my love of the paranormal. Uh, Houdini was noted at the time for having the most paranormal books of anybody in the world. And I have like twice as much as he does. And for about, since the late 80s, I believe, I've been trying to come up with a Houdini and Doyle. Generally, it's like a movie. And the, so every three years, I kind of gather it together and try to figure out what the movie was going to be. And the problem was I had 10 different plots for the movie. And I never could, f I, I liked them all. I could never figure out which one was, was going to be until I finally had the idea to do it as a TV show. And there's a TV series, you can tell all the stories. So, and then, <laughs> see, that's why you turn on. Yeah. And, and then, so, and then we did it as a TV series. Now, how did you guys come up with doing them together? Because I, I know Houdini, of course. I didn't realize that they had a relationship with each other. Yeah, they were, right, if you're into the paranormal, you know that they were friends. And uh, because they were both obsessed with the paranormal. And Houdini was sort of the biggest skeptic in the world, such a big skeptic that even today people take up the mantle of Houdini to debunk the paranormal. And Doyle was the leading spiritualist of the time. So even though they were extreme ends of, the, of that spectrum, they, they were very close for a while, and then they became very bitter, bitter enemies later on over this issue. Different ends of the spectrum. Yeah. And friends. As friends we are now. in this room. Yeah. <laughs> but just learning from history. It could get very ugly at any moment between us. Oh, and, and, you know, one of the things, too, that caused the falling out was that Doyle ultimately ended up marrying a, a medium. And the medium did a, a reading for Houdini and contacted his dead mother, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, they Houdini didn't believe it. So when your best friend marries somebody that you think is a liar, it's going to cause a fallout. Our relationship probably won't end that way. <laughs> there are no mediums in my family. <laughs> so what is the premise of the series? It looks to me from the first commercials I've seen that it's a bit of a buddy comedy with the mystery of the week as well as a little bit of drama because there's a woman in there and I'm thinking is there going to be a love triangle? I think you just pitched the series. Yeah, that, <laughs> basically. Use her, use her question in your answer. <laughs> right, that right. Works, works fine. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, structurally, it's a, a, and, and uh, sort of first and foremost, it's a procedural. So it, it's a mystery of the week. But um, we kind of jokingly refer to it as the Edwardian X-Files because it's, you have two people who, coming from different ends of the belief spectrum, getting together to solve and, and try to solve paranormal cases. And, uh, you know, one believes that there may be a lot of things on the other side of life that we don't know about, and the other believes pretty strongly that there isn't. And so that's their, their clash of opinions. And it's scary, and it's fun. So it's funny, too. It's, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes, we have Rebecca Lidyard playing Adelaide Stratton, the first female cop in London. And um, she sort of, you know, because they initially come to Scotland Yard, to try to investigate these cases. And the head of Scotland Yard assigns this woman um, kind of as a throwaway assignment. You know, it's like, keep these guys out of trouble, you babysit them. So they treat her with contempt, and, you know, she rises to the occasion and uh, starts solving some serious stuff. I love the fact that it takes place in the past. Did you guys consider making it a modern fish out of water where you modernized it? Or was it always going to take place in the proper time period? You mean like elementary? Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> no, I, th I think, you know... It, Did we he, think of taking, you know, Sherlock Holmes and turning him into a doctor in the present? No. 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 That, that wouldn't work either. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even go down that road. No, it's actually, it's a really interesting time period. It's Look, it's the reality of it, but it's also... That time, it's literally a precursor to this time, but it also, everything, everything's changing so fast these days. That was the start of it. 1901 was, not like, that turn of that last century was in many ways the start of that. You know, the telephone, it, you know, electricity yeah, radio, was coming, you know, automobiles, yeah. airplanes, everything was changing. Every 
10 years, the world was radically different than it was 10 years before, which had never been the case before that. And so it's a really exciting time where there was, because of that, this belief that anything is possible. And so it was just a very, it was the reality of it, but it was a very natural place to put a show which is exploring the nature of what is possible. Right, because you, moder- you had miracles right then, the idea of the radio, that you could send a signal and that people, a little box, you could get a signal. So why couldn't you contact the dead? You know, a telephone, you had a telephone. That seems, a, you know, if you, 500 years ago, you would have been burned at the stake for proposing a telephone. So... The other thing is just practically speaking too, um, a period piece. You know, 20 years ago, the only period, 50 years ago, the only period pieces were westerns. And you know, with the advent of things like Downton Abbey and stuff like that, the the viewing public can accept them. And so that's one thing that was great about Fox jumping on board. I mean, it, you know, it wasn't really their typical move to embrace a period piece, and they went for it. They got it and they liked it. And so, you know, now is the time for old time. What? I was going for a sound bite there and it just, it really exploded on me. Yeah. Really backfired. Yeah, thanks. I am impressed by the style of the clothing that everyone is wearing and how did you guys come up with what outfits everyone's wearing to represent their personality? We designed that, right? (laughs) You you and I did most of that. that. Um, I did a lot of it, a lot of stitching. (laughs) we, We had... Our wardrobe people were so excited about this and did such a great job. I mean, their outfits are unbelievable. And we had to do things with the ties sometimes. It was a nightmare for our actors sometimes. Did Michael like the high collars? (laughs) I mean, it was real stuff. I mean, it was real bespoke stuff. They had this stuff. This stuff was custom made for us. And it was, it's really cool. And it looks beautiful. It really does look beautiful. The costumes look gorgeous. Do they get to keep? No. Where are they going to no. wear them? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, it, it's kind of funny because, uh, well, we shoot in Manchester. Rebecca had to wear a corset with it. I mean, yeah, that's right. She did. Like just because those things, not because she's any other reason other than the fact that it, that's just the way it fits. That's the way those were designed to be worn. So that's the way she wore them. You didn't have to wear the corset, though. I would, that no, was not a with, choice. Not with that my, was just a pure. Not with my figure. No, no. no. Um, we shot in Manchester, and uh, while we were shooting, I walked down the street, and there was a clothing store. And in the window was sort of like high-end fashion for men, and it was a slightly steampunkish thing going on there. And I went that's our wardrobe right there like it is sort of amazing there's this call back to like high-end man's fashion sort of thing that you see bits and pieces of and their vests and things like that are just fantastic I mean it really is it was Claire she did a fantastic job on it mm-hmm. the costumes look beautiful I have some friends that are super into steampunk and I've been looking at it and that is a lot of effort to make clothing like that um, one other question is, I know you guys have done the first season. Can you tell me a little bit of the overall of one of your favorite episodes? Or is that too much of a, too much to let go? You can tell me about they're the first all, episode. They're all our babies. Yeah. We love, you're asking me which child I love best. Every yeah, has a favorite child. My mom and dad did. And would they go on TV and, or they go on camera and tell you which one? By the way they act. They each have unique skills and abilities and qualities that I love about each of them, making them each my favorite. And that applies to these episodes. Well, and, and I have to say, like, the first episode is the pilot, so there's a lot of setup in there, and you'll see it hopefully. And, and that's um, you don't like that one? No, no, it's just that <laughs> it, it's, its own, it's its own fish kind of thing. Its own fish? Um, and then two and three and four, we sort of get into it more. And then uh, David's episode, episode seven, sort of breaks the mold. I mean, we go a whole different way, and it's really cool. And we have some alien, an alien episode where... Whenever you do little departures, they, they become ones that stand out a little bit. And, but you've got to do the regular ones and well in order to, to make it work. And this is a cop-out answer, but I mean, I mean, the nice thing about doing 10 episodes is you can like them all. It's very difficult to like all 24 in a season. When you're doing 10, you can like them all. Yeah, I don't like them all, but I, but <laughs> right. you can. You theoretically it's could possible. like them all. Yeah, <laughs> you got a favorite, don't you? I love mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like. A, I really like about seven of them. I like about seven of the ten. What are the three you don't like? I, 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 I like know which ones they don't need to tune into. No. <laughs> no, they were all they were all great in their way, but. <laughs> But there is a couple of slow children. No, I'm kidding. I loved I loved all ten. But 
<laughs> they should do 39 episodes. Okay, we'll cut them off now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see I'm you rambling. coming on April May, May, May 2nd. May 2nd on Fox. Simulcast Fox. A April in, uh, 33rd. April 33rd. <laughs> right. Or 32nd. Well, I can't wait to see it. The costumes look great, and it's such a fun story. Thank you. Great. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Welcome to Fox. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you.